Juan for pedalsandeffects.com and I am building my pedal board for my upcoming Juliet Lewis summer touring. Uh, we're doing like I think two, three week runs at this point, some other stuff. Been on tour before, but when we were in Europe, I made a smaller board so I could fit it in my luggage um, and it helps save on costs. But we're gonna be in the States this time and I can make a big, bigger pedal board and it's going in the truck. So when you give me that kind of opportunity, I doubled up on pedals. They're pretty much mostly like distortion, fuzzes, stuff that accentuates distortion and fuzzes. There's one song that's got the envelope filter. I use the Gaia Tone, the one I've always used. The reason I use this little dude because it's super light and small and it activates real easily. There's other really great envelope filters like the Spatial Delivery or my Mutrons or um, Mr. Black's Wonk Beta, but I just use this one because also it's like, the perfect setting is dying both things and it works perfectly. The other ones I gotta find the settings and so anyway, that's why I'm just lazy. Anyway, comes down to the Boss CS2, of course I got it. It just helps me get my tone. This is the new edition. This is the Gaia Tone um, Bass EQ. God, the EQ's all jacked up. I'm, oh, I got messed up. So anyway, so I keep it all at zero and right here. And then this does all flat and then I kick up and depending on the room or the stage or whatever, I'll add low end or I can cut a little bit of the mid or boost the mid, but it's only for bass frequencies, bottom equalizer. It's not the treble stuff. I'm not, I get that no matter what. This is just to help with runes because the low end gets freaky in all sorts of different uh, situations. So this one I, I uh, bought on eBay. They, they don't make it anymore. So I think you can still find them on Reverb eBay. Actually, I bought this on Reverb. I'm I'm wrong. I bought this on Reverb. I can show you the receipt. Uh, but I do look on eBay. I do look on Craigslist for stuff. But Reverb always seems to have the best price. And then I go from this to MXR Submachine. MXR is cool enough to give me this sucker. I love this. The sub is massive. The fuzz is super tight. Combo of them, super tight. And I needed a distortion, not a fuzz for this for this uh, for this tour, so vitriol. Everybody knows it's mine and Hitchkey's favorite. This thing is just ripper. This is the badass. And yes, they custom it out for me. They put the red, white, and uh, green flags. Yes, that's a etching of me smiling and being goopy. Um, then my favorite phaser on the planet. Everybody knows Grand Orbiter, Earthquaker devices. It's just man, this dude. When you get the right settings, it's just super synthetic. So if I put the fuzz through it or the vitriol through it, it's just gonna make me synth. Of course, the meat box to jack up that PA system, and I do hammer it on a couple of the songs. So it's, it's really nice to have this. My favorite analog delay the endangered audio research doesn't have a cool name now it's just ad4096 but super tight sounds great has the expand knob i wish it was moment but it kind of is momentary it still kind of clicks a little it's not like um the well, ricochet it, it is it's momentary it's just momentary. not like a soft switch yeah soft switch okay yeah thanks nick you, you want to do this you got instead it instead of me um, yeah. Anyway, and then I always end with the hummingbird. So everything I treat, I get to chop up super hard, depth cranked all the way. I don't usually, sometimes I'll use it that fast, but somewhere in here is where I use it. If I'm doing like a baseline based around me, I'll, I'll roll off the depth to kind of make it more sound like Pink Floyd stuff. But typically my setting is dime the depth and then the rate somewhere around there. And it just gives me that, 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 you know, I really love that pulse. Everybody knows it. And then my jacked up Wally Looper because I'm not bringing the big green one because um, then I'd have to bring another pedal board and I'm not going to do that to the crew. They'll, they'll thank me later. So the little Wally Looper is cool. It's hard to hit sometimes because it's such a little dude, but you know, like if I have it here, I'll knock it off. Looks but, like it's seen better days. Well, you know, they, I think these knobs aren't the best knobs. <laughs> but, you know, you get... Well, you, they're tiny. Yeah, and this knob will never come off because look at how sealed that sucker is. This thing is perfect. It'll never bust off. But the little dudes, they just pop right off. Whatever. Like, you, you, you get this benefit of, the, of a 15-minute sampler with, um, you know, the, the ability to be able to pitch it octave up or octave down it's dope this thing's super tight um and it's tiny so it's nice to fit on these pedal board so now how am i going to wire all these up i'm going to wire them up with the rock board cables that warwick sent me and 
they are pretty genius. So like when you got tight spaces, instead of having like the round cables, look at that. They get super tiny, which like, come on, look at that. Your pedals stacked right next together, you're gonna fit stuff. So you know, even in tight corners like that or whatever, we'll be able to really, really jam them together. Look at how close you can get those. That cable fits right in there. It's not restricting. You, you know, you're barely losing any real estate. So that's why these cables are so genius. Have them up like that if you want. If you really want to save space, pull them in like that. Uh, the other thing that Warwick sent me um, is the uh, power supply here that basically can power your cables. You charge this. You use these cables, obviously. One out, boom. And then you stick it in your pedal and then bingo. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna daisy chain and we're gonna daisy chain these pedals together and use this. What this is really good for though, is that when you're in an environment that has grounding problems in the venue, you use this, you're not plugging into the wall. So you're gonna get rid of buzzes, light interference, a lot of dudes will just use batteries on their pedal boards if they don't want to deal with the headaches of, of any kind of electrical noise. And that's why this is super, super smart. We can just Velcro this somewhere under here, take these cables, and then power all your pedals. So check it. I want you guys all to check this. So this is how smart this is. We are plugging the power pack in. So every time I go to, to set up my gear, um, they're going to have it plugged in here. And then if we notice some kind of interference from the, the, the wall power supplies, then we're just gonna pull it. And then we're not plugged into any wall. And there, look at that. But the cool thing too, is that if I'm doing a festival and I have to run up on stage and you know we're not gonna get an extension cord or anything and whatever, or if I just don't even wanna mess with the extension cords, I'm gonna just be able to throw this up there because this sucker is gonna power it for the whole set. This thing is like seven, 15 hours, depending on how many pedals you're running, but at least seven hours of when you're at full charge. But man, I'm gonna just leave it plugged in and then unplug it when I don't and need it. And it's seven hours to charge it. Yeah. Fully yeah. charge it. Yes. But listen to that. So there it is. That's my sound, this bass, this the EQ, this. And then boom, hit the...